Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and can you believe that it's been over five years since R Factor 2 was first released? Back in 2012, R Factor 2 was originally released by Image Space Incorporated and then exited beta in 2013. It's no secret that my personal favorite sim racing title is R Factor 2, with the driving feel, physics, and dynamic environment being second to none in my opinion. Even though it's my personal favorite sim, I am one of the first people to also say R Factor 2 is far from perfect. An initial rocky launch and other reasons led to R Factor 2 bringing up the rear of the field in regards to racing simulations, which is a far cry from the massive popularity of the original R Factor. I wanted to take a look at why R Factor 2 has struggled so much in the past half decade, but also I don't want to go all negative Nancy the whole video. I also want to share thoughts on how R Factor 2 could also fight its way back up to the top again. So let's talk about why I feel R Factor 2 struggled over the years, and if I could sum up the reason in one sentence, it would be this. R Factor 2 became the good enough sim when other titles were pushing to become great. Back when the original R Factor was released in 2005, it didn't have too much in the way of competition. We did have GTR 2, which was a competitor in some ways, but also we had NASCAR Racing 2003 season, which was competing in a different demographic. At that point, we didn't have iRacing, we didn't have Netcar Pro or Assetto Corsa. We didn't really have any direct competitors competing with what R Factor 1 brought to the table. When it was originally announced, R Factor 2 was a very ambitious project. It included features like dynamic weather, dynamic track with rubber buildup, and a very advanced tire model which featured flat spotting and visual deformation. The previews painted the new features in a glowing light and made most sim racers drool at the mouth for the next generation of sim racing. Then, in 2012, after a few delays, the R Factor 2 beta was finally released to a bit of a dulled reception. The title was a pretty buggy mess, car and track selection was extremely limited, and the user interface and everything felt like something pulled out of 1999. The driving feel of the cars was good when it worked, but it took quite a bit of time to get it to actually feel pretty good. And then, as the first few years passed by, one thing became apparent. Image Space Incorporated's mindset towards R Factor 2 was very similar to R Factor 1's mindset, and while that worked in 2005 to 2010, we weren't really sure if that would work in this next generation. One of the things that made the original R Factor so popular was that open endedness. You were able to make virtually any car at any track, and you can make almost anything your heart desired. For R Factor 2, ISI was trying to go for a similar mindset where they were going to make the base simulation backbone and then they were going to rely on the third party community to help bring in the content. However, one of the major problems was with the technological advancements in R Factor 2, RF2 became that much more difficult to make content for. The new advanced tire model was revolutionary, but it was also extremely difficult to develop with. Modders were telling me the tire model was one of the things that kept them from making content for R Factor 2, and then which eventually pushed a lot of modders to Assetto Corsa. Oh yeah, another thing, Assetto Corsa. As mentioned, the original R Factor didn't have much competition, but now R Factor 2 has a lot of competition against it. Its biggest rival is Assetto Corsa, which in my mind, became what R Factor 2 was intending to be. Back in the later years of R Factor, Kuna Simulzioni brought out a title Netcar Pro. Very technologically advanced, but also very bare bones. That bare bones nature really affected the title and made it so a lot of people didn't latch onto it. And then R Factor was very open-ended and it was widely accepted by the sim racing community. And it's almost flip-flopped. R Factor 2 is the title that isn't being caught on much, and then Assetto Corsa is the one that people are attaching to in droves. And it's almost for the exact same reasons. So as mentioned, R Factor 2 was really going to try to rely on the third party community. And while R Factor 2 was initially in development, it looked like that was going to work. 
In the start of R Factor 2's development, it seemed like there was going to be a lot of third party content available. RMT was announcing the highly anticipated sequel to their WSGT mod and it was coming to R Factor 2. The DRM Revival team were saying that they were planning on developing for R Factor 2. MacCore, CTDP, they were planning on developing for R Factor 2 as well. Fast forward to now and essentially all but one of those modding teams has completely folded and only MacCore and Team RMT ended up releasing anything for R Factor 2. All of these ambitious third party projects were announced for R Factor 2 and ultimately they ended up folding and the common reason was R Factor 2 was just too difficult to mod for and the developers didn't provide the proper tool set that they really needed. One thing I will give credit for is that Image Space Incorporated really did bring more content to R Factor 2 than they admittedly did in R Factor 1. In the original R Factor, there was a sort of a sampler of content, but in the end, there wasn't really much that you were wanting to drive. So about 90% of the owners in R Factor ended up just downloading third party content and using that exclusively. In R Factor 2, there's actually content that you would have wanted to drive. The Formula Renault 3.5 was a blast to drive and had a great engine note. The Chevrolet Camaro GT3 race car was a little unorthodox, but it had a fun feel. R Factor 2 also really held its stride with classic race cars. The Brabham BT20 was a blast to drive, and then cars like the mid 60s Formula 3 and Formula 2 while not officially licensed content, was still very fun. Driving them at tracks like Classic Monaco and Classic Spa was a blast. But at the same time, all of this felt like just a weird sampler of content. While there was a greater variety of content in R Factor 2, it all felt sampler-ish. There was only one GT3 car, one GT2 car, one GT1 car, one modern Formula One car. They did have spec cars like the Clio Cup and the Megane Trophy, but really apart from that, they didn't really have anything in the way of official series. While there was a variety of content available for R Factor 2, it felt like that this wasn't the kind of content that a title could sustain itself on. When R Factor 2 first released, it had a bit of a questionable business model. Image Space Incorporated decided they were going to treat R Factor 2 a little like a subscription based online package. They were going to sell the base game for $32 and then they would charge $12 a year for online play. Clearly this was inspired by iRacing which had their own successful online subscription based package. In theory this could have worked well for R Factor 2 if they had a solid online foundation and a good car and track variety. But the problem is, R Factor 2 didn't have that at all. The subscription based system for R Factor 2 was ultimately panned and I think it put a bad taste in a lot of sim racers mouths. And I believe that was one of the original reasons that R Factor 2 struggled as much as it really did. A few years later, ISI came to their senses and got rid of the subscription base and made it where you could drive online for the price of the base game, but it was almost a case of too little too late. The damage had been done, and R Factor 2 was truly behind the eight ball. But sometimes when you're up against the eight ball, that is when great things can happen. A year and a half ago, Luminous Technologies decided to buy the rights for R Factor 2 from ISI and picked up where ISI left off in development. Since then, R Factor 2 has had a lot of new life breathed into it. And honestly, it's making me very optimistic to see what R Factor 2 could become. Since Luminous Technologies formed Studio 397 and took over development of R Factor 2, we have seen a lot of exciting developments. R Factor 2 has finally moved on to DirectX 11 and included virtual reality support. We have seen a full GT3 pack released for the sim. We saw a license with Formula E be announced and then the content released. And now we have a Le Mans series pack coming soon, which will feature LMP race cars and GTE cars. There's a lot of things for R Factor 2 we should be excited about, 
but at the same time, they're not out of the woods yet. There is still a lot that needs to be done for R Factor 2 to bring it to a 2018 tier title. The first thing, and one of the more important things I feel, is give us cars and tracks we want to drive. I mean, yeah, it's cool that there was a Camaro GT3 and Palm Beach Circuit, but we really do need marketing caliber cars and tracks that would appeal to the racing fan to bring in more people. Where's Nürburgring? Where's Le Mans? Where's Modern Spa? Modern Monza? Where's a modern Formula One car? Even if they just made a silhouette modern F1 car, that could bring in a lot of people. But seeing tracks like NOLA Motorsports Park, Atlanta Motorsports Park, while I appreciate that it's bringing in unique content that we don't have in other sims, at the same time, Atlanta Motorsports Park is not the reason someone's going to buy R Factor 2. Another thing that Studio 397 needs to improve is the user interface and not just on the visual side. One of the biggest problems with modern racing simulations is that to really fine tune it to what you need, you have to do it from outside the sim. For example, I drive the open sim wheel and I need to change settings outside of the sim in JSON files to be able to get the open sim wheel to work properly in R Factor 2. Some of these settings should be just native in the UI. Having an option to invert the force feedback forces is something that needed to be done in R Factor 2, but you're forced to do it outside of the sim in an extremely convoluted text file. That really makes R Factor 2, in a sense, inaccessible to newcomers. If Studio 397 really does refine the user interface experience and they make things more accessible from inside the sim to adjust settings, then I could see that being a great draw. I wouldn't say it's the reason people would buy R Factor 2, but it would really go a long way. R Factor 2 is one of the best titles for setting up racing, but on the flip side, it doesn't really take advantage of it well. So one thing Studio 397 really needs to consider is enhancing the competition both online and offline. Offline, you only have the option to set up a race weekend. You don't have the option to set up a championship. You don't have the option to set up a career mode. You just have the option to set up a single race session. That's missing out on a lot of opportunity in my opinion. R Factor 1 had its own custom season tool and it made for great experiences, racing throughout the championship, not racing just to win, but racing for points. That's something that's just outright missing in R Factor 2. Just about every other single player sim has it, why not RF2? And also, they need to improve the competition for online. R Factor 2's biggest mistake, in my opinion, was trying to charge for an online service that did not exist. The reason iRacing is able to charge a monthly fee is because they have a developed service. They have pickup races with wide fields in it. They have a championship system implemented. They have custom leagues. They have the ability to make a custom race. And that is a great thing. But R Factor 2 has none of that. They don't have the ability to create custom leagues. They don't have a progression system. They don't have a championship system. So, realistically, that's something they should add. While there are a lot of leagues that do a great job creating their own custom championship and running it in R-Factor 2, wouldn't it be great if R-Factor 2 was able to manage a championship for you? Last, but certainly not least, R-Factor 2 could greatly benefit from solid documentation. R-Factor 2 is an incredibly powerful simulation but you might not realize it from first glance. For example, R Factor 2 is one of the only sim racing titles that can do 24 hour races with dynamic time of day, weather, track buildup, and also driver swaps. But I bet without looking at any instructions, you could not tell me how to do a driver swap in R Factor 2. There are some third party guides that tell you how to do driver swaps, but there is no official documentation from Studio 397 or ISI about driver swaps. 
Or here's another cool thing. Did you know that you could actually pick up from a save point in R Factor 2? You can actually save a replay and pick up where you left off in that replay and resume an endurance race like that. However, that's not readily available knowledge off the top of your head. You have to dig through Steam Workshop guides to find that out. Studio 397 needs to be more open about telling us what R Factor 2 was capable of for us to truly be able to appreciate it. There's a lot about R Factor 2 to like, but you might have to actually go digging to find it out. So wrapping things up, there is a lot to be excited about for R Factor 2. It seems like Studio 397 is actually doing a good job picking up from where ISI left off and making R Factor 2 into a far better title. Will this be one of the titles that actually truly finds its way out of the ashes and rises up from it? Time will tell, but I'm really hoping it does. So I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think would make R Factor 2 a better title? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe buttons down below and help keep us on track. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.